you, Mr. Fredrickson. It is Thursday, May 20th, 2021. This is a meeting of the Council Rock School District Facilities Committee. I'm chairing this evening, Ed Tate. We have a full representation of the board and we have our facilities direct operations director, facilities director, Doug Taylor. Mr. Taylor, if you would, please. Yes, thank you. So I have a, a big menu here of items tonight, but I'm gonna move through these quickly based on the uh, meeting prior, taking up a good bit of time. If you have any questions, please stop me and I'm happy to answer any questions that you need answered. We're gonna touch base on the energy, the security um, team, facility improvement projects, capital improvement projects, the miscellaneous agenda items, um, and then the board agenda items as well. So from an energy management standpoint, uh, we continue to perform very well. We're at about 84 cents a square foot for electric and gas combined, which is, uh, which is very good. We're, we're doing well. We continue to look for other savings and continue to work to keep these numbers low. Um, and we'll continue to, to do that as we move forward. These uh, reports, as you can see, are always a couple months behind because they rely upon our energy bills getting to our, uh, to Aramark for them to perform the evaluations. Just a brief update on security. There's a lot going on, but we did complete the training, the Act 67 school security guard training, uh, 40 hour course for all of our security guards. And the Safe to Say Something program uh, we've implemented a while back is is, is fantastic. It's, it's gone really well. We have our monthly threat assessment meetings, and each month we talk about any of the safe to say items that have come through and um, really has helped us help students um, and families. So I just wanted to say that I'm really excited about that program, and I'm sure Robert would agree. Uh, facility improvement projects, the STAR Center, um, we are moving along. If you've driven by, you've probably seen that we have curbs in place. We have the base coat paving down. Uh, we continue to work on interior items. The traffic signal project was uh, awarded to a separate prime contractor. We're coordinating with them and our current contractor to complete the intersection work. There are um, physical moves from the former Richborough Middle School, which are scheduled to begin on July 1st. We're beginning to pack and get ready for that move. The delivery of the new furniture for Star Center will be delivered the week of 12 July. And the contractors working on Star have uh, worked with us and they've agreed to hold off the wearing course of paving and striping till after we're you know, delivering those uh, the delivery of furniture. So we'll have tractor trailers driving around there. The last thing you wanna do is pave and have them you know, turning around on new surface. So they're gonna wait, let us get that furniture in place, the big trucks out of there, and, and then get the wearing course down. Just a couple pictures, cause I know you haven't been there. Um, we can hopefully resume with some site visits down the road as we start these other large projects. But the above ceiling um, components are in place, the pieces that really that really matter when you start to look at how far you are in a project, the, the building controls, the wiring, the life safety systems, electric, everything is, is in place. The building um, boiler plant, uh, the high efficiency gas fired boilers are in place. The electrical systems, wires are pulled. It's not just panels and condo, but we actually have landed the power you can see the pumps, the hot water heater, uh, expansion tanks, everything is good. The pipe is insulated, we are moving along. The terrazzo floors have uh, begun in the uh, corridors. Uh, we are fortunate to have two parallel corridors so they can work in one and have contractors access the building in the other. It's always a challenge when we're putting these floors down to gain access to the spaces people need to be. But we've coordinated that well. The building's really starting to fall into place. This is one of the large group instruction areas. You can see it's a nice open, uh, well-lit space, and that's generally uh, natural daylight that you're seeing there. There's not a lot of artificial lighting to this point. Those are the suspended LED fixtures that will serve that space and provide nice illumination when we do have them up and running. 
the casework starting to go in. Um, the floors will go in soon. From an exterior standpoint, we have the outdoor plaza area. There will be some tables here uh, outside the cafeteria for, for students to use. The facade, you can see the main entrance. We're getting sidewalks in, um, getting all the, the finished materials in place. The other uh, bus entry, which is the just the side entrance to the same building. You see the generators in place and uh, gas service. And it, as I said, the base paving, the roofing system is in place. Uh, the flat roof is going on now. And again, just one more shot of the, the main entry, the classroom, academic side to the right, and the common spaces to the left. It's a, a nicely designed building by Breslin. They did a, an excellent job, as always. Hillcrest Elementary School, we are again working on vacating the elementary school uh, in uh, July. The teachers are beginning to pack any materials that they can. We're beginning to dispose of any materials teachers have had around for many, many years. Um, anything of value obviously gets saved, but anything that is that is timed out obviously is not. Um, Sam Smith helped us. Sam Smith went through this move, uh, principal from Rolling Hills. We met with Jim Vaca, the interim principal at Hillcrest Elementary School at Richboro, and uh, it was a great team approach. We walked the building. We know that we can easily facilitate the Hillcrest and the spaces that we previously were prepared. Um, so we are preparing for that move. The land development process has gone well. We are uh, off in terms of uh, meetings. We've had our pre-construction meeting, our meeting with the township, conservation district, and we're basically good to go uh, at, at the permit. There will be a um, community forum for Hillcrest Elementary School in June, uh, Monday, June 7th at 7 p.m. And we're going to talk about the uh, plan project, give a little overview of what we're doing there architecturally, and um, talk about the imp impact of transportation and answer any questions community may have. So um, there will be notice on that to parents. The PTO is heading that up but uh, we will have that meeting in early June. Uh, from the construction update, again, we had the kickoff meeting with contractors. The site work really starts in July. The building demolition activities start um, in July as well. We have um, talked to Mr. Vaca, and we're gonna get in there as soon as teachers are out and just start doing some, some uh, measuring, uh, verifications, ceiling spaces and things. Uh, as soon as the students are out, just to get a head start on doing some field confirmation, not physical construction. Preparing the lead paperwork and uh, monitoring process for the ACE grant. So you can see uh, the demo work starts 8 July in the building and 1 July on the site. And I'll continue to update you on how that is phased, but this building phasing is very simple since we're vacating the building, obviously. And uh, just a floor plan in case there are any questions in terms of what we're doing. But we know it's generally uh, renovations, infrastructure. Most of the classrooms are staying exactly where they lived with just a little bit of interior partition work. Uh, the boiler room addition on the upper right corner and on the bottom is a small admin addition to make those spaces appropriately sized. And the budget, we'll continue to update the budget as we move through the process. The, uh, we benefited from the ACE grant award of 820,000, which is fantastic. And uh, as we know, we're about 1.8 million under on this bid, so very favorable. So Feinstein Elementary School, the same process. We are working on uh, getting ready to move some of the spaces there uh, in anticipation of this summer's work. Um, we're working with Mr. John Harlan on uh, the preparation of the temporary teaching spaces, how they'll work. Uh, we've been working together for a year or two on this, so we're, we're ready to go. Um, and um, the staff will also be made aware of, of how this process works. We're also going to have a community forum for Sol Feinstone Elementary School on Monday, May the 24th, uh, this coming Monday at 7 p.m. It will be Zoom, and we will review all of the phasing for this project, how it will work, what it will look like, what the expectations are, what the practices will be, and how 
community can reach out if there are questions during construction. And it will be the first of what could be a couple of those kind of meetings since that is a three and a half year phase project. So that there could be more than one, but we will certainly get everybody informed up front. The land development process went well. We've met with the conservation district and the township, and uh, we have just some loose ends on plan con documents, which we'll seek approval for, but as we know, there's a moratorium, so it's really just a formality, and hopefully, you know, being proactive if it were to come back and we had any retroactive potential. So from a construction standpoint, we've completed the agreements, we're preparing the schedule, we're looking at the uh, submittals, a lot of shop drawings are going through because of product availability. It is really important that this process move quickly. Um, it's going to start on site work uh, shortly. Um, and that really is more of getting uh, the site ready from an erosion and sediment control standpoint where the new temporary parking lot will be. Uh, areas that will not affect um, the entrance or exits to the building as it lives now through the rest of the year. The only issue uh, down the road will be an impact to the buses that drop down to the bottom level. And when that happens, John Harlan will reach out to community and express how that will look with uh, staged pickup and uh, drop off uh, timing for buses and parents. That's, that's the only impact uh, this school year. Environmental remediation, uh, important to note, will start in the summer months, will not start while there are kids there, will not continue while kids are there. That will happen only when the building is empty of students and staff. So uh, we'll talk more about that at the forum on Monday night. And just a, a, an overview. So the site work, as I said, that parking lot off to the right is a grass field today. So the drive that you see on the bottom right is going to be the temporary construction entrance into that area will all be stoned. The existing parking lots as parents use today will remain. So there won't be no impact uh, to that for uh, parents today. Just lower level, uh, that will be the first piece of construction that we start. And as you move to the, the main level, those two wings that you see coming at you are the second floor of that lower level, which will also be constructed from the get-go. Those are the 13 classrooms that will start. We're working on site phasing with the contractors. We're going to, to meet on site with all of the primes and talk about the impact to utilities. The utilities are in that area that is circled. They all come from, many of them come from uh, Eagle Road and up to that circle. This was a map I once showed you of all of the utilities that are in one area that we have to carefully coordinate. It's honestly as surgical as it gets from a construction standpoint. So we did some soft dig. We know exactly where many of these utilities live, about how deep they are. We're gonna share that information with the contractors and make sure that we work diligently to avoid hitting any existing utilities that would sever services to the existing building and begin to parallel services so that next summer, when that addition is ready, we can make the final connections and plug that piece in and be ready to go. So there's a lot of planning up front, and I feel confident that we're going to be in good shape uh, next year this time to talk about those 13 classrooms being occupied. Uh, as we start this project in this first phase, the lower level on the right that's circled is the area that will vacate uh, a couple classrooms. And we know that we're building two classrooms in the gym and we're building a, a classroom in an existing space in the library as well. Um, worked closely with John on how that will all look. And on the left, the oval shaped area with the blue coming down off of it is a classroom that we're reducing the size of, creating a corridor that comes out and providing emergency egress stairs from that second level. Since that new addition will will be in the way of egress from the second floor. We are providing emergency egress with, with steel stairs um, outside that are covered uh, from the weather if there were an emergency for students to be able to uh, you know, exit the building in an emergency. The budget, as we know, was basically right on budget. It's about 200000 over the uh, targeted budget, uh, but we do have some value-added alternates that did take it there, but very good shape in that regard. 
Bell Synthetic Turf Project. Um, if you've driven by, you may have seen some orange flags. You've seen some fencing go up today. Next week, uh, B. Blair will be bringing vehicles, equipment, and begin stripping topsoil and getting ready to actually start moving earth out there. So um, that project, again, we finalized land development, and we are in good shape, uh, ready to go uh, with construction. Capital improvement projects. I'm not going to go through each one individually. This is a list of summer projects. Uh, the South Glazing Project actually did a little bit of glazing replacement uh, on 18th of May on Election Day when there were no kids in the building, took advantage of some time. Uh, basically, this is any windows where the seal failed in the insulated glazing that were fogged up or wet inside um, are being replaced around the perimeter of that building. That's a good bit of windows that need to be replaced. The natatorium starting blocks are being replaced with current design standards for starting blocks, something that kids will see in college when they do exit high school. Uh, we have very uh, old uh, starting blocks, and actually the, the base plates are starting to corrode and are, you know, we have a concern. So it's a safety issue, uh, not just a performance issue out there. The North Admin, uh, again, most of these were working on submittals, getting ready for uh, the air conditioning, heating, uh, ventilating system there. The flashing star, uh, the star signal and flasher project is underway. We're uh, meeting with PennDOT on certain sites where new flashers are being installed to confirm the locations. And um, that is going to uh, happen quickly. The flashers will all happen this summer. The signal at the intersection of star uh, is in question because of the ornamental mast arms that are required in the village overlay district. If you're familiar with Northampton Township, you've seen the nice black fluted uh, mast arms for their signals that are historic in, in appearance. It's a uh, 16 to 20 week uh, wait for those mast arms. So we're going to get everything in place, um, get the uh, footings in, the foundations and anchor bolts and wait for the signal itself. But um, we'll be okay there rain garden work will happen. That's also Blair who's doing the turf field, so they'll be able to toggle back and forth and get that done. The South uh, Terrazzo repairs, contractors working on getting us samples to match the existing Terrazzo. We were actually able, uh, fortunately, to get the same Terrazzo contractor that put the floors in uh, is also our contractor coming out making these repairs 20 years later. Uh, they have all the mi mixes and matrix that they used in the past, so they have the formulas and they're in pretty good shape. The other two projects, the indoor air quality improvements and sale house stairs are being bid. This budget, uh, and we'll continue to update the budget as we go. We're obviously on budget today based on the assumption of what these two project bids will be when they come in uh, next week, and they'll be reviewed at the upcoming board meeting. For the, excuse me for interrupting, Mr. Taylor, but for the sake of the public, these are projects that we have looked at previously. This list is pretty much unchanged and from That's prior discussion, right? That's correct. With these, these are unchanged. These were bid. These were awarded by the board uh, previously. The only two that we haven't reviewed with the board are the two I'm reviewing now. The needle point, bipolar ionization, the indoor air quality improvements that's currently out to bid and we'll receive those bids on May 27th, and I'll bring those to you on June the 3rd uh, to review those and hopefully award those. There's about 225 air handling units and 650 terminal units that would receive these, uh, the bipolar product. Um, there's a lot of discussion about bipolar and the positive effects, negative effects. Um, we'll have that conversation on June the 3rd to make sure that you're fully informed in terms of what this product is, how it works. We'll see what the bid numbers are, and we can make a decision as a group on uh, proceeding or not. Um, personally, hearing more favor than not in terms of utilizing the product, but it's important that we all understand, you know, what's being said and, and answer any questions that you have. Um, some of that pertains to ozone levels, which is a byproduct of of the bipolar ionization. So, the key thing for us is doing baseline testing up front and testing after the units are installed, both times at which the units are actually running um, and, and functioning 
outside air the way they should be, and then we can actually confirm, because these units only function when the units are running. So we will uh, talk about all of those things later, but we are in the midst of receiving, uh, waiting for bids to come in on May 27th. Hale House stairs is really a no-brainer. Uh, you know, the stairs are structurally unsound, uh, the deck, um, and it's really only attached to a, a rim joist because the joists run uh, perpendicular to this wall. So they're not really attached to a strong uh, double header or something that runs across there uh, the way you'd like it to be. And by today's standards, with the number of deck accidents that have happened throughout the years, it is much, uh, the, the design standards are much, much higher than they once were to put a deck on a home because they, they know that you're likely going to have a deck party and put a bunch of people on it, right? So we are putting just a small landing area and egress stairs because we don't really need a party deck for the sale house program. So we are working on that. We'll have those bids on the 27th of May as well. So this just shows you uh, June 3rd, those are the three projects I'll bring forward, and then we'll move forward with those pending the approval uh, immediately following. Miscellaneous update, uh, had many uh, maintenance supply service bids uh, out, and we just received those numbers. So I'll be bringing to you the number two fuel oil uh, for Sol Finestone and Sale House um, soon. It will only be for sale house. The number two fuel oil will no longer be required for Sol Finestone, which is a good thing. Gasoline, uh, which is in an underground tank at the former Richboro Middle School for district maintenance and transportation van. So I'll be bringing those. The numbers were all uh, favorable. We really didn't see anything too extraordinary. Um, we generally go with the floating price, which is you know a, a cost of the um, market rate, and then they apply that to it, and that includes all costs, including transportation to the site. Propane uh, for a year uh, for Sol Finestone in 24. Wood floor uh, refinishing, it's a very small contract this year. Only a handful of floors are really being addressed because of COVID. We didn't use the gyms as much this past year as we would have. Um, normally, the outside users weren't using the buildings to the same capacity, so we're going to save a little money there and skip a year on some of that. Integrated pest management uh, control, sprinkler system maintenance bids as well for uh, monthly and quarterly, yearly testing. These are mostly three-year agreements that you're seeing now. Chiller preventative maintenance service bid. Folding partition maintenance. We have a lot of folding partitions in the district, motor operated. They come in and they take care of the tracks and the, and the pulleys and the uh, trolleys. The certified domestic well water sampling is uh, also an important uh, service for us that is um, monthly and annual testing reporting with the PA Department of uh, Environmental Protection and the Bucks County Department of Health. That is for uh, Sol Finestone and for Rice County. Boiler maintenance bid. Of course, we have many boilers, and uh, we have the required LNI inspections. Water testing and treatment. This is for our chemical feeding systems for our chilled water pipes in many of our air-conditioned buildings, and those with cooling towers. We want to make sure things like Legionnaire and other things don't uh, become a problem. So we're we're always making sure our water systems are, are in good shape. Elevator and wheelchair uh, lift preventative maintenance bid. So we have uh, monthly inspections. We did have a bid lower than this, but we did, uh, we did uh, find them non-responsive. Could not get the list of references that we were looking for for public school experience. So we went with the second low who does have uh, school experience and had glowing recommendations. Fire extinguisher maintenance is another. Uh, they come through, they check those, um, inspect those, tag those, make sure they're good. If any are not functioning, then they temporarily replace those until they get the other service or we get a new, new unit. We're seeing far less fire extinguishers than we once did because the buildings are now fully sprinklered and the fire 
marshals, fire chiefs don't want you to have a lot of extinguishers in buildings because they would rather you leave than fight the fire. So obviously we have them in areas like a, near a boiler room or maybe near the kitchen where there could be something that breaks out to get something small out. But it obviously if it became big, you would exit the building. And knock on wood, fortunately, there's not a lot of school fires. So we're, uh, we're thankful. They're fully occupied buildings, so <coughs> you know it, it would be observed quickly if it were. Fire alarm service, uh, again, semi-annual on-site inspections of all of our fire alarms and systems kitchen hoods, magnetic door hold opens, all those other components that are a part of a fire alarm. Uh, the desert air uh, preventative maintenance, that is the dehumidification system at North that runs 24 seven. They uh, come in and they perform the maintenance inspection on it. Biological waste service bid, uh, again, the, um, you know, the specimen bags, the containers, um, the, any of the chemicals that's all removed by this company and um, that is a three-year bid primarily for the high school science programs. Ballast batteries uh, and bulb recycling so this is different than e-waste uh, any of the lamps that we have or or batteries that are used throughout the district it's all uh, responsibly recycled through this program in compliance with the EPA. The collection and disposal of e-waste uh, has not been bid uh, in a while now. E-waste sold their electronic waste component to um, Pet Collect, um, and they are currently managing our e-waste. And they work closely with with Carl Brown, who has been a great partner to us from e-waste. Uh, I met Carl. We we started this program here many years ago. I'm really proud of this. Program. It's worked well. We run two community programs a year, um, and they collect community waste. They only charge community for uh, TV with, uh, with with tubes, with the CRT. Um, it's like $25 for a, a TV that has a tube. Otherwise, they collect everything, you know, at no cost. Uh, it's responsible recycling. They grind the components up. They give us a document that they were that they were uh, destroyed and they divert all of this from, you know, land waste. They're not putting this below the ground. They're not poisoning streams. They're doing all the right things and it, it's good for us and the, the environment. The uh, next service is a professional service. This is the AHERA three-year testing. Until Sol Feinstone came around, we didn't have a lot of discussion about asbestos, but it has made the board a bit more aware of what it looks like, what we do, how it works, and that's not a bad thing. So every six months they do review the building to see if any of the items identified have changed in terms of condition. Uh, they provide an update to the report, and every three years they update the entire report. In addition to that, we do the district-wide lead and drinking water testing every year, um, and uh, that that is a law that's required, and we do um, have to either do the test or discuss it at a public meeting. We do both. We test and we discuss the results at a public meeting. So we're very responsible and transparent about it. We've had very good uh, results, very good uh, process for doing so, and um, haven't had any major issues with lead. There's the right to know uh, or global harmonizing system. It used to be MSDS sheets essentially, but they uh, provide us with all of that information on a thumb drive at each building so we know exactly what lives in each school. If there were any emergencies, we would know exactly what chemicals are in that building and what the data sheets show us should there be an emergency. Above ground storage tanks get uh, tested every five years. We have a couple tanks at set North, South, Holland Middle, Newtown Middle, and Sol Feinstone. So they'll, they'll provide a, a spill prevention control and uh, countermeasure plan, which is the requirement. Also uh, do the radon testing every three years. So we're constantly checking all of these uh, environmental concerns throughout the district responsibly. Uh, we're using, um, in this case, we sent it out to four companies. We received uh, results from three, proposals from three, and Element Environmental, who's been our partner uh, on most of our construction projects as well as our independent testing agent 
is the uh, low proposal. I'm glad for that, and we can see the value that they provide us. So, again, hasn't been out to proposal for quite some time, uh, but we decided uh, to do so, and uh, it will be Element Environmental again. Uh, engineer of Record is currently out for uh, proposal. This is the uh, summer project uh, work that we do. Uh, assist me, I provide uh, a list of projects, budgets that I prepare. They help confirm the budgets after we, we meet to review the projects. Um, they provide a defined design team. They provide us with the civil engineer, the architect, structural engineer, mechanical, plumbing, electrical, and name those in their uh, proposal, uh, vet those out to make sure that they are uh, qualified and people we would want as part of our big team. They help perform field investigations and surveys, and we uh, together uh, develop the documents for uh, the projects that we'll bid each year and work together on the three or five year plan um, in preparing for what's coming down the road. These fees are provided on a sliding scale fee. It's not just a lump sum fee. It would be very difficult for anyone to say, here's the percent for me to do these projects, not knowing if it's a $25,000 project or $500,000 project. Um, so that is in the works. We generally see a sliding scale fee. They went out to Breslin, who's done good work for us, to Schrader and to Dewey. They've uh, worked well. We've had some other folks in the past that hasn't worked out well, so they were not invited back. And I won't announce names publicly. Sewage treatment facility operations and maintenance for uh, Wrightstown Elementary School. When I came here, we did not have a licensed operator at Wrightstown, and I quickly found out we needed one. The EP uh, worked well with me and said, better figure this out, so we did. And um, we have a licensed operator who we've been using since I came on board um, about 10 years ago private utility enterprises. Um, I did seek proposals at that time. Um, I would recommend based on their relationship with DEP, based on their knowledge of the, of the plant, that we continue with their services. I asked them for a proposal. Um, they started here 10 years ago at a fee of 3,900 bucks uh, a year. Since then, their fee has only increased 1.5% per year. So they're at 4,500 for year one, 4,800 for two, and 4,800 for three. Um, so I, I would recommend that we we keep them on board based on their knowledge and keeping us out of trouble. There's a lot of work that gets done with DEP uh, monthly reporting, and uh, and then we coordinate with uh, another company, our hyd uh, hydrogeologist for the groundwater testing and making sure that everything is copacetic between the two. The next item is probably the one that, if anything, generates the conversation tonight it would be this. I don't think it's a big deal. My recommendation would be to, to look at moving forward with this. We approved uh, in 2016 a trail easement for the Northampton Township at Welsh Elementary School. Uh, runs along the property line township got a 50-50 uh, matching state grant uh, through the Greenway Trails and Rec program. And um, they proposed the project as we provided the easement, which included a footbridge over the kind of the wetland area on the site, the drainage area. I have a bigger picture here that I'll show you. Um, the problem with it was when they did the job, that footbridge was a significant cost, added cost to their project to the point where they rejected the bids because it was far greater than they expected it to be. So they came back to me and said, hey, you know, we'd love to come present and ask if we can change the, the alignment of this trail. And I said, I don't think you need to come present. Let me at least review it with the board initially, uh, with the committee initially. And if, if you do need to come back, then we can ask you to do so. So tonight I'm I'm presenting on their behalf essentially, but they would come here and present this if need be. So if just as a quick overview, New Road is to your right from uh, top to bottom. The school is right around the middle of there. You can see it says M. M. Uh, Marine M. Welsh on the school. And the oval below is the little 
pocket park that they own where there'll be a trailhead parking lot. We did provide, that is their property. There was going to be a potential antenna on that site at one point, and then they changed and put a parking lot in, which is better for us. Um, at the end of the day, we already approved that trail that runs along the back of those property lines as it angles up the site. And then where it curls up toward their park um, is where the change took place. And if you see on here, the yellow is what they initially proposed and the easement we provided. The red is where they'd like to go. And all they're doing is looping around the edge of the, of the vegetated uh, drainage area versus over it. Um, it stays out of the way of our field, essentially. That red is like is the easement, but the path is within it. Um, I really don't see any issue at all. I mean, they're already walking along the edge of the property for the greater part of their pathway there, so all they're doing is looping around to get over to the park. Um, I'm going to ask them to give me the information we would need for a revised easement and bring it to the board unless there's some objection and you'd rather them come and talk more about this. I have no objection. I don't see any objection here. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, Mr. Rodago has a question. Yes. How about the surrounding residents? Have they been uh, aware of this? Yeah, they have to vet. I mean, they would have to vet that through the residents, but this doesn't, this doesn't, actually, if anything, this helps them a bit. It stops. You can see the yellow used to run along the back of the property a little further, but now it it stopped short. But yeah, in 16, this was all reviewed with, with the appropriate folks. And I'm sure for this amendment, they'd have to do something similar. Do some public. OK. Yeah. Thank you. The Superior Turf House Track Lease Agreement, um, this would extend it through June of 24. When we had this last time, we I looked at uh, market rates for leases for turf around the area. and. We added about $5 an acre to it, and that made it pretty much right on the money with where other people were. We really weren't undercharging. Um, this agreement, I'm adding $5 an acre again. Uh, it really isn't a major increase, about $300 a year, or about 900 over the three years. But the bigger benefit, I think, for us is that we, you know, uh, don't maintain the site. We have a pretty nice looking site as you drive by and see that turf most of the year. And in the winter when we're not planting turf, there's some sort of crop just to keep it from eroding and maintaining the site. So they're responsible with it. They're responsible for the site and maintaining it. And uh, I think we've enjoyed a good relationship there. There is a 90 day termination notice should at any point we want to cease this lease agreement. We can, if they've already planted their turf, they have the right to farm their turf, obviously. Uh, we can't take the turf and put a nice field there. But um, yeah, so I, I think the agreement has, has worked well for us. Uh, this is a shot of the site. You can see that site goes much deeper than you think when you're on a swamp road. Or, um, so, and if you actually take the areas off, which I did, um, it is about 60 of the 72 acres. Because I started to say, this looks like more than than 60 acres, and uh, it really is right around 60 of the 72. So uh, it's a fair number uh, for both of us. Um, ABM Custodial, just a quick update. We haven't talked much about them, but they are doing a really nice job in terms of uh, picking up um, the services that were once uh, someone else's, and um, they're, they're doing everything they can with staffing to either retrain the staff that's here, retrain and retrain again, or last, you know, if, if necessary, replacing that staff. So they continually work on um, advertising, interviewing. Um, it's, it's not a profession where people stick around for a, a long, long time. Uh, they're, they're trying to do better with that. They have incentives that they've implemented. They have um, programs, recognitions, advancements from within. So they're doing everything they can to make it more desirable uh, to be here and stay here. And uh, we've seen some very good uh, custodial uh, staff members. We've seen some schools that said, hey, you can't take this person away. Like, we, we need this person. That hasn't happened before. We're really, you know, seeing some people start to shine. Um, 
always have some challenges and we're working through those. And um, from an FTE standpoint, uh, we had around 65-ish before. We're now at around 78, which is what we asked for in the new agreement. They're about too shy. At any given time, there's attrition, so they're constantly bringing on. But um, for the summer, uh, 60 is what's required, and 60 is they have more than 60, and they'll employ more than 60 for the summer. This will be their first summer of working with us through summer camps since they're back. Um, so there's a lot of a lot of things we're going to have to work on together, a lot of projects. Um, but we're working closely together to prepare for those things. So I just want to recognize that ABM is after their first real year is, is doing, you know, a nice job acclimating here. That, that's interesting. So we're going to be back to full utilization this summer by the community programs? Yes. Good, good. All the, the township programs are all full steam ahead. Uh, the last thing I have on my agenda is just the, and I don't expect to have a long conversation on this unless you'd like to, but this is the benchmarking we talked about just before we were stalled by COVID. Um, and we, we did benchmarking with other facilities for facility use. Um, the numbers are really pretty much still relevant in terms of increasing our fees from where we are today to where we should be. Uh, I guess my only thought as we toggle through these, and you know, this would be something that would be on a board agenda down the road, not for June, but something uh, down the road, um, depending on when in the near future or not. I'd like to get notice to folks whether it's going to be this year or next year. Obviously, if it's this year, it has to be sooner than later. Um, I guess what, what I was, what I would recommend personally, and obviously at the end of the day, you make the decision, but. Um, being these, these users didn't have use of the buildings this whole last year, and this will be their first year back in buildings, I'd really like to uh, delay increasing the fees for this next year and consider doing it for uh, the 22-23 school year. Um, I just think it's a tough, a tough thing to ask. You haven't been able to be in our buildings, and now we're going to have you back, and we're going to charge you more, like from the get-go. So... If there's any consideration for relief for this next year, you know, that's why I say it. But if not, we could implement this sooner and we could ask for, you know, uh, greater fees in the 21-22 school year. But just my thought. Um, comment? Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Just a real quick question on auditorium. It says first hour for, you know, for-profit, uh, $300. And it says four per four hours, but it says three hundred dollars first hour. Just curious. Yeah, I mean that, that's the way it's it's you know the, the four hours. It's been hundred bucks for four hours, and then three hundred dollars for. Oh, I thought it was like nonprofit for profit. It was a hundred dollars for for four hours? Yeah. I'm, and then per four hours for for profit is three hundred dollars, and then it says first hour. I just wasn't sure. I was just trying to make sense of the four hour per yeah, the four first hours. Yeah, the first the first hour is three hundred dollars, and then and then, it, and then I'll, I'll check with Pauline. I think it's okay. Then I think it's a hundred per hour after that, but I'll confirm that. Yeah. We don't have to discuss that. Um. So yeah, so we can go over those rates in greater detail. Yeah, I mean, you sure. know, Pauline Borgia, I think the day that we really want to present this and have the have any kind of motion or further discussion, I'll have her at the meeting. Uh, I'll just say thank you for having us out today. It's you know, makes I, I just wanted to get it back in front of us because it's been a little while, mm -hmm. and uh, I think it's important that we we recognize it. We'll also have to, you know, down the road work on the agreements for the, you know the turf as well for. Uh, the parties that will that are interested and then there were just some other uh, hourly rates and things that we needed to consider the summer camp participants are $15 an hour it would be more appropriate at $25 an hour um, obviously that wouldn't affect this summer but if we start looking at this for the 22 23 school year then we could start you know thinking thinking about it down the road and making all the, the users aware of it early so they can prepare as well So board agenda items, uh, my last piece, 
for tonight. Board agenda items uh, have consent agenda would be plan comp part G uh, for Hillcrest and plan comp part F for Sol Finestone. Again, just a formality. All of the maintenance service, uh, maintenance and service bids um, as well. The professional services for environmental and the licensed operator. The lease agreement for the house track. A change order for Rolling Hills. There's a closeout change order uh, for the mechanical contractor. It's a credit of around almost $31,000. Um, at the end of the day, uh, they are going to finish about 225000 under their approved bid. So we have a GC bid that's higher because we had a lot of uh, a lot of slab prep and other things. I'll bring a total summary when we close out the electrician, but I think in totality we'll be under budget for the four primes. But um, our efforts are always to be under budget and um, return monies at the end of these projects. Well, that's a nice chunk of change. It is. We had we had an early uh, value engineering. Uh, uh, catch on that as well. We had some spring isolators for the rooftop units and um, we changed the spring isolation type because we had a concrete roof and we saved about 150000 from the get-go. So uh, the value engineering never stops even when you start construction. The non-consent items will be the bipolar ionization, which I'll bring to you that night, the sale house stairs, and the professional services for engineer of record who's currently doing engineering and we'll see uh, who that will be after we open those numbers. Probable topics, as I said, June 3rd uh, will be these consent agenda items, the non-consent, um, the uh, RPE services, and then the 17th is back to, uh, looks like just like a regular update meeting. So as summer comes, you know, uh, it really just comes down to update on the capital and facility projects generally. So that is it uh, for me. I went as quickly as I could. I apologize that uh, I couldn't go quick. Oh, no, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Taylor. Is there anybody on the phone with a question or Ms. McKee, Dr. Thorward? I have no questions. I just want to say that it's just great to see all these things moving forward, uh, talking about things that are more normal and uh, positive for the district. So thank you very much, Doug. Thank you. Mr. Odago. Thanks, Doug. Uh, just real quick, everybody's been a long night. Appreciate your, your, your holding out. Um, so the, uh, the bids, the three-year uh, agreements, uh, the cost, is that annualized or is that actually for the three years? Yeah, that's a good question. That number that I showed you was the lump sum for the three years. But when I give you the board uh, docs information, you're going to see the summary for each year of the three years. You'll see all the unit prices uh, that get us to each year and then the total for the. Okay, good. And I appreciate it. Uh, the, the sale house uh, stairs now make more sense to me. It's actually a deck or is that different? The stairs in the front or is it's it? A, it's a deck with stairs today. Uh, but it'll be a much smaller deck with stairs, which the primary function will be emergency egress, not you know, not the use of the deck. Yeah, that particular project raises my uh, my. Uh, I don't know why, but uh, is it the material going to be like the resin wood or something like that? It's going to be high end for twenty thousand dollars. You think? Uh, no, it's just uh, again. I don't think it's going to be the twenty thousand. Right. The uncertainty of lumber costs and, and exactly things are the. The challenge is, with, you know, there is the composite wood, and you can do it for nearly the same cost of the composite wood, but there's different qualities of, of the composite as well. So um, we're likely going to go with the with the, with the lumber. You know, okay. We can always talk to the, the low bidder about an alternative for that when they get the job and see if there's any value in considering changing it. But some of those products uh, don't necessarily weather as well either as, as much as you think. So, thank you. Appreciate it. Any other questions, comments? Thank you, Mr. Taylor. Thank you, guys. Very good presentation I, I as always. Quick one uh, yeah. Please go ahead. Hey, Doug. I I don't know if anybody mentioned it. I I do support a delay on those uh, usage fees, um, and and making sure we're getting it right. Uh, you've been in this arena with you support yourself. I know we spent, our organization spent a lot of money 
in finding additional areas to uh, practice and rent uh, that we don't usually uh, incur in terms of costs. So I, I would support delaying that a year, making sure we get it right, making sure the sister districts are uh, in line with what we're thinking. Uh, we, you know, we want these kids back doing these sports. So any savings they can see would be appreciated. I, and I, I wholeheartedly would support that, Doug. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah, I agree too, Ed. And, and when Doug told me about it last week, I, I was in agreement. And then I just looked at the, the fee tables, and there are some significant increases. So um, they're not the kind of thing that I think uh, would, would go over well with uh, community organizations at this point. Um, so thanks again, Mr. Taylor. Anything else? I hear nothing else. Okay, good. We're adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.